Okay, so welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at Colette, the latest horror experience to join the Nintendo Switch. Now, can this one justify a place in your Switch library, or are you better off going elsewhere for your scares? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing community, and let's get started as I break down story, gameplay, graphics, audio, and wrap things up with my final verdict. Let's do this. So with Colat, what piqued my interest nearly immediately? The fact it's based around a true event known as the Dyatlov Pass Incident. It occurred back in 1959 when nine experienced Russian hikers died on the northern Ural Mountains. Now following an investigation, it was discovered that something had occurred which drove them to tear out of the side of their tents and flee with inadequate gear or clothing. Dying due to this combined then with sub-zero temperatures, what happened to this day remains a mystery. Now, following the recovery of the bodies, then it was also confirmed that while hypothermia got them, three showed signs of physical trauma, including fractures and even one that was missing both eyes and one their tongue. It's grim stuff, honestly, but like any mystery, this all led to speculation from an avalanche through to some seriously strange conspiracy theories. So with the game opening with a quick synopsis of offence leading up to their expedition and very much following the real facts that I just kind of laid out for you, this one does quickly set its tone, revealing a tale with a supernatural twist. The idea is this, wander this mountain, find notes and piece together basically a horror themed interpretation of what could have occurred. Well, I will admit I'm not the biggest fan of supernatural horror and I would have preferred a more grounded approach. I can't deny the game kept my attention locked in as I kind of pieced together the, the offence unfolding. The story here, it's told through notes that you find out in the wild that give you just enough to feel like you're getting somewhere, but never enough that you're not, you know, excited to see what the next one includes. Overall story, the supernatural elements throughout won't be for everyone, but the tale, it is handled well and I enjoyed my time exploring this mountain, trying to work out basically what the hell was happening. To gameplay then, and I'll say it immediately, it's a slow burner for sure. Explore this huge map on foot, and while at points it may kind of feel like a walking simulator, it definitely brings a little bit extra to the table to make it feel like you are on like, you know, a true adventure. Controls are basically this though, walk, sprint, duck, and then interact with objects, and that's about it. To mix things up though, the paranormal that's occurring can cause instant death and you will very much be expected to sprint away or stealth past like these ghost-like figures that roam the mountain. Get caught by them though and they're pretty much yeah, gonna kill you instantly. Perhaps the most interesting gameplay design with Colat is its map functionality though. This isn't the typical digital experience, you know, where you can set waypoints or see yourself kind of flashing on screen. Here you're getting a paper map, a compass, and you need to work out the rest for yourself. You're gonna be using things like recognizable you know, landmarks to just little clues that you'll notate as you go on the map itself. This game, it doesn't hold your hand at all when it comes to this map, it's challenging. You're absolutely responsible for its translation. You will for sure get lost, but it's also because of that seriously rewarding as you put some real brain power and effort into progressing. If this does not sound like your ideal gameplay mechanic, I can tell you now, this game is not for you. The entire experience basically revolves around it. You're gonna be looking at it to navigate to coordinates that are actually scribbled on the left edge of this map. Then you're gonna just be spending a ton of time in it, trying to figure out things like where you are and using the compass in the hand to work out that next direction. I gotta say, I really liked it personally. It grounds the very much paranormal situation you find yourself in with some realism and a true reflection of the 1959 setting. Now, as you progress also, I will say this map becomes easier. Easier. Your progression leads to notes being added that display locations where you've discovered, you know, campsites and these notes. They even actually provide the ability then to fast travel back, so say you do get lost, you're only one click away from trying it all over again. It also does thankfully cut down on any sort of forced backtracking, which is a real nice touch. The paranormal then that I've already mentioned, yeah, you get those ghost figures, but then you can also expect a ton of things happening just around you. Expect things like floating rock formations, mists that pursue you, and yeah, 
a few more ways to die. If you do die, expect to return to the last save point. This does lead though into one of a couple of problems I do have with Colat. These save points, they can be few and far between and it works on this auto save system where when you interact with a note or camp, it's, it's gonna kick in. There's no manual saving here at all. Sadly, this means if you do find yourself knocking on death's door sometimes, it can throw you pretty far back and you'll need to retread you know, some serious distance. Not so bad when it is your fault, but I will say frustrating when one of these ghost things comes out of nowhere for the desired jump scare and you feel like you really had no control over the scenario and there was no way you could get away from it. Your reward, you gotta do it all over again. I would have liked a few more save points personally at key moments just to cut down on this slightly. Like overall, Colite's a very unique experience, a slow burner that while very much a walking simulator in a sense has those inclusions to truly make you feel like you are in control and on this mission of survival in the wilderness. Throwing then the occasional like action moment and some truly creepy locations, it's only let down sadly by a poorly implemented save system that could do with a little bit of a rework to be more accommodating to the insta-death this game plays with. It's simple stuff overall but takes all the right boxes for horror fans out there. So visually it's a decent looking game that's for sure, nowhere near what you would find in let's say the PC build, but that's understandable and they've pieced together here something that it is impressive and for the most part I will say translates to the Switch well. The mountains they look terrifying, the key locations particularly creepy, and then the overall atmosphere of the scenario they just nail it. It would have been very easy to miss the mark here but thanks to just some smart design I feel like there was always something happening on screen whether it was the the day or night differences, the storms that envelope you, the mist that appears from nowhere well then just the enemy is slowly walking through the snow with like these suitably colorful glowing tracks. Visually they have a nice balance between what is real and what is paranormal. That all makes it a little bit creepier because it's very much grounded in real life. Sadly though, it's not without its problems. First up, there's a heavy blur over the whole image, making it occasionally feel sub like 720p even when it's docked. For the actual gameplay, it's, it's not a huge problem honestly, and you can kind of almost write it off as like an environmental fog. But what highlighted it for me was interacting with the notes scattered around this world. These notes though, while the main story ones are voice acted, a lot are not, they can be considered like bonus content, and they fluctuate somewhere between blurred to no chance of reading them. Now fortunately I will say there is actually a solution to this. The game doesn't do a great job at all times of explaining the controls and it took me to like maybe like 30-40% into the experience to pick up on this but if you pull the left trigger it's actually going to zoom in on the document and now it will be legible. Just be aware of this because when you look at these documents initially you may think it's a bug with the game and kind of a roadblock to getting the full experience and that's not actually the case. You just need to kind of mess around with the controls a little bit. Then as well another problem it's less minor but there's the very occasional frame rate stutter. It's rare but it is worth knowing because you will definitely encounter it. Look, overall, Colac captures the atmosphere spot on, delivering an intensity that blends both the real and the paranormal to this great effect. So audio-wise, for me, this is Colat's biggest strength and an absolute accomplishment in audio design. Fear, no matter the media format, isn't scary without a sound field to match. Watch those classic movies like your Halloweens, your Friday the 13th, on mute, you won't jump once. It, actually, it even comes close to comical. Colat clearly understands this and just went absolutely all out. First off, it captures the environment at all levels from effects in the far off distance to the sound of the snow around you, the wind that's filling the air, the intensity of a snowstorm. It's constantly then playing with the idea that there is something close, but just far enough away that you can't see it. It just keeps you on the edge of your seat. Mix this in then with like some subtle paranormal effects that don't you know quite feel natural and you have a winner for the world building. Most impressive then though is the use of sound as a gameplay mechanic. The papers that you find that push the story forward they don't show up on your map obviously or you know get a waypoint or anything like that. That could break the realism. Instead you actually hear them just fluttering in the wind. With headphones on then you'll even be able to identify what side of your character they are on you know by the left and the right speaker. It's a true 
truly impressive use of 3D sound design. To wrap up the audio package and a stunning atmospheric soundtrack has been implemented and then the face acting, the legend that is Sean Bean lends his talents amongst a cast of other talented voice actors and it just brings this additional layer of credibility to this indie production. It just elevates the entire story. Audio wise it's an example of how you do it right. So overall Cola is an experience that is unique in the sense it takes a real life mystery and then theorizes around it. A supernatural approach may not be for everyone, but I can say most horror fans they should find something to like here. The story it's fascinating, the executioner just drip feeding you information just works perfectly to keep your attention locked and keep you curious to what is coming up next. Then that map system as well, it's, it's going to prove frustrating, but the payoff it, it's it's unlike any other game in that sense. For on top of this then those stunning audio work and yeah, you've got yourself a solid little horror experience here. Today I'm awarding Colat on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. While it's not a perfect experience and it's definitely got some graphical issues here and there, I will say I largely enjoyed the majority of this experience and I think horror fans, you will find something in here that's definitely going to be to your taste. Thanks for watching today as always we truly do appreciate it if you're new here consider heading to the channel check out a few more of our videos see if it's the content you're looking for we have tons of reviews tons of deal breakdowns then why not hit subscribe if you love the switch as much as we all do here join our growing community we'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone <laughs>